Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another video. In today's episode, I will be sharing with you another tip for building microservices in Go, specifically REST APIs. We will be talking about OpenAPI 3, how to integrate Swagger UI, and how to generate client code that is coming from our actual JSON API. So this is a step number four of implementing REST APIs. Like I just mentioned, we're going to be generating an OpenAPI 3 in YAML and JSON, we're going to be integrating our two new endpoints using Swagger UI, which is, I will show you that next. We're going to be generating Go client using uh, a code generator that we is going to be using uh, our API behind the scenes. So before doing any of that, I just want to give you a quick sort of introduction to Swagger and why is this even needed? The whole point of defining Swagger, of using Swagger in general, is that we have a way to document and collaborate with our users and indicate exactly how our resources are implemented, the parameters that we're going to be receiving, the responses that we're supposed to be sending back, and the requests that we are supposed to be accepting by our clients. This includes the types, the fields, um, and everything around it, authentication, maybe the different error messages or error responses that we need to return. All of that is ex specifically documented in this uh, specification of this document. Now, Swagger or rather OpenAPI slash Swagger is not the only way to do this. You literally have other options like using RAML, which is another alternative, and using API Blueprint. Um, those sort of are similar, the three of them. Now, why would you choose OpenAPI or RAML or, or Blueprint? Well, the reason is that OpenAPI is a little, a little bit more popular than the other two, and the tools that are available are, are more general and applicable to many different programming languages, and in practice is one of those most popular uh, specifications out there. One example uh, I can give you, and I will show you next in, in the next uh, slide, is that GitHub also uses that um, this is specification for defining other APIs. Just to give you an example, so there are other companies that use it, uh, use that as well. Now there are two books that I like recommending, and one of them is the Design of Web APIs and Irresistible APIs. The two, um, the links to to this, uh, to to buy them will be in the description. You can check them out. Is this to allow um, not only talk about Swagger and and Raml and Blueprint, but also to give you a uh, more on, on a better idea how to how you should be building APIs in general and if I want to cover all of that I will, it will take me forever but I highly recommend you to to spend some time reading these two two nice books that I have linked in the description now if we go back to how to implement open API we need to define well what is exactly open API and what is exactly swagger and the way they like to define it is that open API is the specification and Swagger is, are the tools that are used for implementing that specification. Like I was telling you just now, GitHub, uh, the REST API that they have is a great example because if you notice, they actually have a bunch of different resources that they can you can do practically everything with it with uh, with those resources, and everything is defined using the uh, RESTful. I'm sorry, not the RESTful, the Open API that is linked in there obviously is on github so if you look the actual api uh, the actual open api specification that they have that is documenting all the resources and, and arguments and so on and so forth is actually three megabytes so if you look at this you will notice that all of those values are actually describing here now again this is one of those cool things about open api is that it allows you to generate a document either jaml or json that then your customers can use for generating um, their own clients that they can use for connecting and interacting with your API. There are a few different tools that uh, Swagger includes, and those are the official tools, the community, not only the Go community, but many other uh, communities that happen to be using different programming languages and whatnot have built equivalent versions of those that happen to be used only that programming language. And I will show you a few of them in, in next. But these are sort of the the the, the original ones, the, the ones that are actually supported by Swagger. Now, the important thing about Swagger is that, or OpenAPI is that, uh, rather, there are 
two big flavors if you want to put it that way. One of them will be OpenAPI 3, which is the most recent one, and OpenAPI 2, which is the old, one of the older ones. The biggest difference between them is better explained by this article that I will be again linking in the description as well, that includes um, uh, some of the changes that happened during the the, the big uh, new major version in OpenAPI 3 and, and some of the other changes that are included in, in OpenAPI 3.1 as well. In practice, um, there are a few things like the one-off and any-off that uh, allow you to define the responses and the requests in a little bit different. But other than that, it's more or less practically the same. Um, I, I want to think, or another thing to call out will be the definition of describing callbacks that you can actually def describe callbacks instead of defining only uh, or enforcing or rather OpenAPI enforcing path all the time. So it's one of the, those new features that were added in OpenAPI 3. Most of the times, depending on your use case, you will be using uh, similar options that were already available in OpenAPI 2 uh, or rather Swagger 2. And I'm mentioning all of this because um, specifically for Go, Sadly, the amount of tools that are available is not that enough and it's not um, as polished as, for example, for Java, if you're using Java or C Sharp. Um, and that may be a problem for you. If you're trying to use OpenAPI 3, uh, you just have to stay tuned and see the to continue watching the video. Uh, but if you want to use OpenAPI 2, I will be recording a different video and I will upload it next time. But for this one, is using Open, OpenAPI 3 that is going to be using a few bleed and edge uh, packages in Go for both generating the Swagger, the actual JSON YAML code, uh, and also for generating some type save uh, code that is going to be used as a client to connect to our API using Go. With all of that being said, um, as usual, the link to all of this is in the description, so free, please feel free to check that out when you have some time. Now. How is this organized? So I have already my server running right here, which is what you saw. Uh, oh, you didn't see it. Well, I will show you right now. I, if I, I don't recall if I saw you di uh, this before, but this is basically the integration with the Swagger API. The way this is working is that we're building it um, before we're building the Swagger JSON and the Open well the Open API JSON and the Open API YAML, the those two endpoints, and also embedding. The, the Swagger UI configuration and the Swagger UI code. The way I'm doing it is that in on the, the REST server, there is a static folder that happens to be using all the code that is coming from the actual repository from Swagger UI. And there, I'm literally embedding it using uh, the new embed feature in Go 1.16. A little bit, uh, one thing important to call out here is that uh, I'm actually doing this sub uh, method call, function call, uh, for the content that is coming that was embedded previously. And the idea is that I can actually sort of um, use the file server, the HTTP file server, but also only point to the values or the, the files that are under swagger.ui. So that way I can still keep the same path using static Swagger UI and that will still point to the files that are were embedded previously using that new new argument, new new command. Now, how is this actual JSON in this case generated? Well, that is the fun part. Uh, there is a new type. If I go to open API, there is a new type that I'm using that is coming from the two packages that I was mentioning before which is keen open API, which is right here. And the other one that I'm going to be using is this new tool called OAPI Cogen, which is not here. But if you noticed in the readme, I added the actual instruction right here to install in that specific a type. All right, so is this, uh, I hope everything is making, making sense so far. So after installing the OAPI Cogen, what is happening is that um, because I was using a another tool that I had to build because of the requirements that OAPI has for uh, actually um, taking a file that is a YAML file local to the file system 
for generating the actual type safe code. I know there are a bunch of things and I will recap, I promise, I promise you. So I have this new simple uh, package, uh, not package, this simple tool, the tool that it actually receives an input to where to where output the JSON and the JAML files. And at the moment, those are being generated uh, somewhere here in this folder. So now that I have uh, what I need, the, the tedious part of using specifically this uh, package is that there is no way compared to the Swagger 2 versions to the Swagger, the other Swagger 2.0 um, packages and tools is that there is no way to somehow inline or describe your API without actually using uh, code, which may or may not be a problem problem for some people. But if you notice, I'm, I'm literally using the uh, Keen uh, Open API API to actually build or swagger JSON and JAML. Now, this is where it could get a little bit complicated because if you notice the way we're defining our uh, types, we are defining. Uh, let's say we have a schema and the context of the schema if you remember there are priority dates and the task so those are sort of the types that we're using across the board in the order responses and requests we need to explicitly define those here and if you if we go back to the actual uh, JSON UI you will notice that these are right here generated so those instructions that we had here are literally indicating the values that will be uh, display back to the user through the Swagger UI or in general any Swagger tool that is uh, available or, or the customer happens to be using. If we're using uh, priority for example you will notice that this is an enum and it has a default none and again you can you can see it right here is you can see this and default none and the enum with the values and the same applies for dates and task. Now in the case of the three APIs that we have which is the read, the update and the create, we need to explicitly create the requests, which is right here in the context of creating, there is a request in the context of updating, there's another one, and the responses, which again, um, we need to define the error response, we need to define the create response, and also the read response. So all of this is more or less um, extremely manual and is prone to error, So, but also at the same time, it gives you enough flexibility to build what we are trying to build with the JSON for the JSON, uh, in this case, the, the JSON, the Swagger UI. Uh, it supports YAML and as as well as JSON. Um, and again, another thing that I mentioned, but it's obvious that we need to add is that we need to specify also the path for creating, getting, or right, reading, uh, getting, and finally putting the values. In our API, I, I know it is a lot, but again, I will recap all of this. I promise to you. And um, after this, what we have to do is literally use embed, um, not embed, I'm sorry, uh, take a look at the way the API is being generated, which again I mentioned, mentioned to you that is using the O API cogen that actually generates some files under here under the PKG Open API folder, and that one is the actual. A new change that is also added for any code that is generated and is meant to be included by by uh, your users that happen to be in this case uh, Go clients, they may want to import your PKG folder. That in reality it looks like if we are using it, the, I created a small tiny CLI tool to show you how it works. It's literally using the generated code. But it's using our own API through the HTTP endpoints. And one way to show you that this is actually working is if I do a main. But before that, let me show you the database. Um, I mean, nothing. There are five. If I go to the main, I mean, if I run this, you will notice that I created a task called sleep early. And I, it was low. It changed to high. I changed to sleep early. And it's supposed to be completed right now. So if I refresh, that one should be created right here, which is high, it's a high priority, it's done, and so on and so forth. So let's say if I need to get the details using the Swagger UI, it says to buy some notebooks. 
I go, I go and try it out, I pass in and I execute it and I get the same values to buy some new notebooks. So all of these steps are seem like a lot of things and it, there are a lot of things to, to, to be honest with you. Uh, and I want to recap. So again, for this specific video, I'm using, I'm, I'm building everything with the intention of creating OpenAPI 3 uh, and a, a specification for OpenAPI 3 using two different packages, one for generating the, for generating the actual JSON or YAML and one, one for using the YAML that we generated in the previous step and generating type safe Go code. This is the most recent version supported um, by a lot of tools out there and and it's up to you if you want to use something much more that requires a lot of steps or you want to go and take something that although it's still using something really old is more supported by the Go tooling that is available by the community. Those are sort of the pros and cons right here. Uh, I will be honest with you. I think I will. If you have your doubts, you should stick with OpenAPI 2, knowing that there are a few things that probably you don't even need. Uh, and most of the clients that currently exist uh, for Swagger already support 2.0 or should be supporting 2.0 anyways. So you, your customer should be okay with that. If you're having more um, customers that happen to be using already OpenAPI 3, maybe it's a good idea to use those two packages. But again, it's sort of like a, a bleeding edge uh, situation right here to to choose either OpenAPI 3 or OpenAPI 2. So again, it's one of those things. And as, as usual, um, the link to all of this code will be in the description. Please feel free to check that out. Um, and uh, any comments or, or any questions, just let me know. I'll do my best to answer your questions. And as usual, you know, keep it up and don't give up and try to sleep early. <laughs> Good night and talk to you later.